I want my students to feel like they are the explorers on the journey and I'm kind of like their guide. I remember on the first day of class, I was like, this is gonna be a tough nut to crack. <laughs> I could tell Mr. Herzig was not playing any games and we were gonna have to, there was no like pretending that you know, you know anything, like you either knew it or you don't know it. This class you get to create more of your own argument and um, you really become the leader of how you interpret the text rather than a teacher telling you exactly how to interpret the text. I want my students to feel like they they really own the space that this uh, this room that they spend so many hours in over the course of the year is really really theirs. I think that the purpose of having work made visible on classroom walls is to generate conversation and to show progress. It allows for thoughts to come up and um, help drive the class discussions and it also allows the students to be the center of the classroom. It's all led by us so you really have to know what you're talking about otherwise you won't have anything to share with the rest of the class. How can we teach students how to uh, look at a text better and more completely. We are really prompted to continually ask questions and even when you think there's no more questions to ask, you continue to ask questions and you, every time you get deeper and deeper into the underlying messages. In our essays, it really provided the framework for writing analytical essays. When I read, I used to, I used to never take annotations, but now I, my pages are covered in writing. I don't I don't find myself on, on the walls, which is uh, really inspiring as a teacher. They have to take an AP exam, so I wanted to make sure that there was a means um, to assess how well they could synthesize the information rather than just replicate uh, questions that they've seen before. They have to work with a partner, they have to design a study, it has to be uh, mathematically valid and meet all the requirements for statistical inference. They have to collect data, organize data into graphs, charts, uh, calculate statistics on that data, um, run a full statistical test, make an inference based on that information, and then be able to clearly and concisely communicate that to a room full of people. We're given the opportunity to take what we've learned in the classroom and apply that to an outside area of interest. For me, that was cars. Usually we're given data by like um, some sort of database, but this time we actually had to go get it and do all of the statistical math behind it uh, to get to our conclusion. For this final project, every individual piece of this project was already designed as a lab that they had done throughout the year. So on those labs, they had the opportunity to make mistakes and learn from mistakes. And then by the time it got to this final project, then they had already mastered those skills. Applying it to a real world scenario uh, allowed the, um, all the material really to gel well before the final. For final exam review in honors geometry, the students will lead the review. I give them a, a review packet and they do that review packet, but then they're responsible for explaining it to each other. Uh, and the reason for that is that uh, the studies have shown that when a student explains an idea to someone else, they learn it more deeply than when it's explained to them or when they're just using it for themselves. Each student was able to uh, come up with their own idea and collect their own data and follow up with an experiment. It helped me to create my own ideas and push me out of my comfort zone. I've become a lot better at analyzing while I'm reading simultaneously and also being able to present that same information related to the class. Thank you.